الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to our course Search Methods and Design Today we are going to talk about uh, Still we are uh, evolving around uh, data collection and we are going to talk about a very popular tool although I don't like it myself but I have to speak about it because it is very popular in research whenever uh, whoever wants to do research he is very likely to use this tool which is called questionnaires questionnaires are a very popular tool uh, and used uh, nowadays in research um, you see a lot of people carrying their questionnaires with them going to different uh, institutions and distribute them to uh, what we call participants or students however to teachers to administrators uh, and a lot of people just to gather information about them although it is a very popular tool still it has some drawbacks and um, it's not the best way to collect data it looks as the easiest way to collect data but no designing a good questionnaire is not uh, an easy job and we are going to see an example here about how to start just as a start uh, uh, for a uh, start for designing a questionnaire it's not an easy job at all so questionnaires as I said uh, it's been perceived and seen as the uh, easiest way to uh, to do research uh, because someone just uh, they can snatch a questionnaire from 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 the internet and then they give it to uh, uh, somebody to answer and then well hey I finished my research this is these are the results now believe me research is far from uh, from this and if you want to enjoy doing research try do it by yourself from A to Z from 0 to 10 believe me you will enjoy it uh, and when you finish you will sense the achievement you will feel a sense of achievement that you did the research and everybody is proud about your research maybe prouder than yourself uh, and they are likely to use it and maybe uh, and don't underestimate underestimate yourself don't say well for example I am not going to change the world well yes you are not going to change the world that's true and this is what I told you from the beginning you are not going to change the world but you are going to add to knowledge your name will be there that you did something to knowledge and this is very easy you, no one is going to stop you from doing research all research centers all institutions and yourself you can you can do research by yourself you, you don't need permission from anyone uh, to start your research unless you are going to research for example an institution about uh, a research about King Faisal University and you need to get some information from the university you need permission but let's say that you don't want to collect any information you have the information you collected your, the information from internet from uh, 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 from different so, uh, resources so you don't need any permission so believe me doing research you will be welcomed uh, by different research centers by different scientific institutions if you want to do research and by research we are going to help our country rise uh, and we will help knowledge to rise and we will start to follow the steps of the advanced world they were advanced by um, by implementing scientific research and this is what we are missing we are still underestimating research first we are underestimating ourselves well I cannot do research why this is not true we are here to help you to prepare you to do research this is number one number two uh, well uh, I can uh, well I can do some kind of research but it's not an important I can ask anyone to do it for me I can go to student services 
bookstores uh, and they can help me. I can ask a friend, I can ask blah, 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 my wife, my husband to help me to do it. Say, no, do it yourself. You would say difficult, yes. You have to go through all of these barriers and difficulties. But don't stop. So back, uh, I digressed, uh, I digressed uh, a lot uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the topic today. Today is about questionnaires, and let me go back to questionnaires. Questionnaires, you want to uh, ask about your participants. You have some participants in your mind. I am going, for example, to students, uh, fourth year uh, level, uh, university level students. Uh, for example, medicine students, males or females, you have some kind of participants. You go to select some information about them. And all uh, again, all our examples will be drawn about languages, mainly about languages and linguistics. So in your questionnaire, uh, you, you would typically, and I'm talking typically, uh, you would typically talk, uh, you, you would typically elicit information about their language, and before that, some non-linguistic uh, information or variables like uh, gender. Let's go to the next slide and read from it. Data of this sort, data elicited, elicited in the form of people's reports about language or something related to language. Data of this sort is most used in ELT, English language teaching, applied linguistics, and sociolinguistics. All of these three areas are of concern to us as, uh, as linguists. Essentially, subjects or participants report about what they or others do or on beliefs about or attitudes to language, language learning, uh, etc., or on non linguistic variables you need to record their age, years of learning English, uh, and etc. So with these questionnaires, you ask the, the subjects to report about what they or others think about their beliefs, about the language, about their attitudes. Let's say that your topic is about what do you think of using computers? Uh, in the classroom. So you want their beliefs. Well, they would say, well, I believe using computers is not good. Why? Because students are likely to uh, go YouTubing, Facebooking, Twittering during the classroom, and this is going to mess up everything. Well, this is just one belief from maybe administrators, from teachers, from parents, from the students themselves. You can have another view or another belief, well, no, using computers can be motivating, can be good, can be encouraging, etc. So you can do this through questionnaires. So questionnaires can tell you about what your participants or others think about. Uh, you can ask, uh, you, you can uh, ask the students about their parents' belief. You go to the students, what do you think? your parents think about using computers in a classroom. So it's not about their beliefs, but about others' beliefs. So on beliefs about or attitudes to language. What is your attitude to language? We have some, stu some students that do not like English and say, well, this is not our language. We are proud of our Arabic language. We don't want to learn English language. It's the language of atheists, uh, the language of kuffar. Uh, I don't want to use uh, to, to learn that language. This is attitude, and it is an, uh, a negative attitude. So maybe you want to check the attitude of people towards English language. Uh, so it's about beliefs or attitudes to language or language learning. What do you think? What is your attitude of uh, learning English from, from the... Uh, 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 earlier stages of education from the first uh, stage, from the, the second stage, or from, the, from, from elementary schools. Or you can ask about non-linguistics variables, and here example, you ask about their age, 
uh, how many years have been uh, they have been learning English about their uh, about their uh, gender, male or female. These are questions that have nothing to do with the language. This is why it's called non-linguistic variables. So you need just to record all of this information. Why? Maybe they are going to explain your results later. If you have differences between the two views, you would say, well, why there is a difference between the two views? Maybe you have 50% uh, saying computers are good in classroom teaching and 50% saying, well, no, it is good. Oh, I, I, I couldn't reach a, a conclusion. Why? Because I have 50% here saying yes, 50% here saying, saying no. I want to explain this. You can go to the age, to the gender, to the uh, different uh, non-linguistics variables that you recorded from the beginning and they could explain to you the difference. Maybe you, you would find females favoring, saying yes to computers more than the males, or younger saying yes against to uh, older people. Why? Because young people, they like to use computers, but old people, maybe they have different attitudes towards computers. So it's very important from the beginning you record some of these linguistics variables to help you later. One type, the grammaticality judgment task is popular in acquisition research. Reporting ranges from think aloud reporting, immediate retrospective reporting after a, ta after a task, open interviews or daily type of reports, to structured interviews, closed questionnaires or attitude rating inventories and judgment tests. So here we have different tools to uh, collect the same uh, information, but unfortunately we are not going to uh, talk about them in details. Why? Uh, because I don't want to squeeze a lot of information in your head. It's, it's enough for me that you know um, the advantages and disadvantages of questionnaires. We have something called grammaticality judgment task you give a task to your students and then you ask them to uh, judge whether this is a grammatically correct sentence or not. And from this task, you can know whether your students learned or acquired grammar or not. So this is one way or one tool. Uh, think aloud reporting. Uh, we, we talked about this earlier. When you ask your students to think aloud while they are doing a task, well, um, you have a task, for example, uh, of, again, vocabulary items. Students start to think aloud. Well, I am thinking about um, the, the suitable word here, or what is the correct answer? Is it A, B, or... No, A is not right because it's a noun, and I need an adjective. A B, no, B is not an adjective. Oh, well, C. C is a, a, an adjective. Let me check it in the... Uh, uh, in the... Uh, uh, in the answer. Let me answer it and see whether... Let me read it with the answer. This is all called think aloud. This is one way, and I personally favor think aloud for different reasons. Immediate retros retrospective reporting, which is some kind of interview after you finish, for example, your questionnaire or your tasks or your test, you sit with the participant, uh, with your students, uh, whoever, is, uh, whoever are your uh, participants, you sit with them and you start to ask them about uh, about what they did, just to make sure that you are getting all the information you want. Uh, so, retrospective reporting, um, after a task, open interviews, from its name, it's an open interview, I will sit with you, just talking, asking each other questions, and then I will get some information, it's an open interview, you don't have a set of questions. Diary type, you go to your students and you ask them to, to write 
everything that they did during uh, a period of time for one day for two days for one week and from the diary you can get information how they learn the language how they do whatever your objective is structured interviews well a structured interview you have a set of questions you sit with the uh, people you want to ask these questions and it ranges from structures to semi-structured interview with semi-structured interview you can ask more questions but with a structured interview it's limited to to these uh, interviews closed questionnaires closed questionnaires is uh, they need just to circle some answers and that's it there's a, a, another different uh, version of questionnaires which is called the open questionnaire where you ask your students or your participants to uh, answer some information um, so this closed questionnaires or attitude rating it's like questionnaires or judgment tests the normal test you give to, to your students to judge whether they are in a particular level of language or not the former are heavy on data analysis transcribing them if spoken yes if you have interviews and think aloud very difficult why because it's going to generate a lot of data you are going to uh, transcribe all of these information you you listen to them and then you write them uh, just to see them in the front of you and sometimes if it is in Arabic you need to translate them into English and categorizing what people say and often contain material suitable for purely qualitative analysis so again all of these uh, suits qualitative analysis the latter involve more work in constructing the materials beforehand and the data analysis may be fairly automatic and computerizable the more open instruments of this sort are typically of ethnographic research all might be involved in action research or, or classical research usually of the non-experimental type a lot of terminology here don't bother about it but what is important for me that you know these different uh, tools and today we are going to uh, deeply talk about questionnaires so this is uh, an example of a conventional closed questionnaire a typical closed questionnaire so uh, the task here spot as many unsatisfactory features as you can in the following start of a sociolinguistic research questionnaire given to people in Wales so this is the start of the questionnaire it starts with name and then the second question is what age category do you belong to under 18 years from 18 to 21 from 21 to 25 over 25 years and then we have have you ever learned any other languages if so which languages how much do you speak Welsh at home often sometimes never do you agree that Welsh should be uh, obligatory in schools in Wales and on official documents income tax form yes no there are not enough Welsh language programs on TV yes no how many variables are being measured there think of more than one a hypothesis one my so sorry how many variables this is uh, for us so this is the start of the questionnaire and here we have the set of questions so starting with the name do you see any problem some would say no there is no problem but no it is sometimes a problem some some people do not like to expose their names to you so make it an optional one way to improve this questionnaire is to have here the word optional so this is one way optional do not make it mandatory and don't say well I'm going to tell the people after I distribute the no have it from the beginning because some respondents some participants they do not see this from the beginning they may reject without telling you 
the reason for rejections. They might reject uh, answering your questionnaire. So have it as an optional. Uh, the second question is, what age category do you belong to? There is a very obvious problem here. How about if you are uh, a teen, uh, uh, sorry, how about if you are 18 years old? Are you going to select this or this? So, an obvious problem. How about if you are 21? Are you going to select this or this? How about if you are 25? Are you going to select this or this? So one way to improve it is to have it under 18 years and here from 19 to 21. And here from 21 to 25. And here over 26. Or you would say 26 and above. You would say 26 and above. This is uh, one way to improve it. It's better than asking the uh, participants to provide their age because it's sometimes it's very sensitive. They don't want to tell you the exact age. So having them as a range from kada to uh, bla is um, a better way. So you see, just from the beginning, we discovered two problems. As I told you, it's not an easy to design a good questionnaire. Now let's go to the third question. Have you ever learned any other languages? If so, which languages? But what if you, uh, your answer is no, I haven't learned any language. You should have here another choice saying if no skip to question, for example, three or four. Because here you are presupposing that they would answer yes. Because here you are saying, if so, which languages? But how about if the answer is no? I haven't learned any other language. So you, you should have another option. If no, skip to question number four, for example. How much do you speak Welsh at home? Often, sometimes, never. Again, if my answer was, no, I don't speak Welsh. This does not apply to me. You need to tell your uh, participants, well, if your answer is no, skip to uh, question blah, blah, blah. And supposedly that your answer, yes, I speak Welsh at home. But it's my mother tongue. I usually speak Welsh. There is no an option here. Often, sometimes, never. But I usually, I always speak Welsh at home. Or maybe I speak Welsh outside uh, my home. So you see, your questions need to be very specific and very concise. Do you agree that Welsh should be obligatory in schools and Wales and on official documents, income tax form? Yes, no. Uh, the problem here is uh, uh, is very, very, uh, very deep. Why? Because starting with do you agree, it's like a leading question. You are leading your participants to agree with you. So avoid using, do you agree? Uh, don't you agree? Uh, um, are you with this? Uh, are you uh, against that? Try to avoid these statements. These are, call, uh, these are called leading questions because they unconsciously lead your participants to agree with you. Because one, Disadvantage with questionnaires is that sometimes participants give you what, you what you want. Do you want us to agree? Well, we will agree with you without telling you their real opinions. So avoid using do you agree. Say, for example, what do you think of using Welsh in schools? Agree, don't agree. This is a better way. 
Another problem with this question is called uh, having a double questions. You have two questions in one question. Do you agree in using Welsh in schools and using them in official documents? Maybe they agree. They would agree in using them in one of them, but not the other. They would agree to use it in schools, but will not agree to use them in uh, official documents or vice versa. So avoid using double questions. So here you have the first question and here the second question using them in official documents. Uh, there are not enough Polish language programs on TV. So again, it's a, a leading statement to uh, lead your students agree with you that there are not enough. But how about if they do not agree with you and they want to say, well, no, the, the, there is enough. But again, ask them, what do you think of the quantity or amount of TV pro programs, uh, Welsh language programs on TV? So you see, different problems in a questionnaire uh, and you really need to consider them if you want to develop a, a question because these are the generic problems that everybody fall into when they design a question. Now let's uh, go to my question or to the uh, uh, writer questions. How many variables are being measured there? Think of more than one hypothesis one might formulate about them. How would you represent people's responses on each as a number for computer entry? So let's say that you have finished uh, your data collection and let's now try to guess the researcher's um, objective behind this research by identifying the variables. Well I see here that he wants to check, check students uh, or participants' attitudes and beliefs about Welsh language and the use of Welsh language in uh, every uh, everyday life. So the first variable is uh, uh, people's attitudes. So let's actually people. attitudes and beliefs. So this is an obvious variable. And maybe they want to check the, uh, uh, the effect of age on uh, these attitudes. What I mean by the effect of age on attitude uh, is that maybe we have different groups of people, youngest versus oldest people, uh, uh, in regard to their views of using Welsh language. Maybe the uh, older people would like to use Welsh more than English or vice versa. So they want just to check maybe the age on um, people. So the second variable is age. And one of these variables is called uh, dependent and independent variable. And as I explained before, that the independent variable affects the dependent variables. So age here is the independent variable because we think that age can affect attitudes. But do you think that attitudes can affect age? <laughs> no. So age can affect attitudes, not vice versa. Age can affect English language learning, but if you learn English, do you think it's going to affect your age? If you learn English, you are going to be uh, to reach 50 faster? No, but it's vice versa. If you are 50, maybe your learning of English is going to be slower than who is in his 30s or 20s, I'm talking about age. So this is very important that we know the difference between uh, 
the dependent and independent variable. So we answered how many variables are being measured there. Uh, well, uh, we can see here uh, one independent and one dependent variable. Think of more than one hypothesis one might formulate about them. Well, you can say that, as I said, uh, uh, older people will uh, have more preference to use Welsh language in school than uh, uh, younger people. So we have this hypothesis. Older people will prefer to use Welsh more than younger people. So older people will prefer to use Welsh more than uh, younger people. Sorry. younger people. So this is one hypothesis. We can generate more than one hypothesis about using uh, Welsh uh, in school, using Welsh in offic official document, and who is going to prefer more than the other. So we have all of these set of hypotheses that we want to test. The answers for these hypotheses, uh, we will have them after we analyze the data, after we uh, collect back the questionnaires, we analyze them and we reach the answer, and which, which is called results that's going to be talked about uh, in the next lectures. Uh, how would you represent people's responses on each as a number for computer entry? We are going to talk about this uh, later, but uh, just to give you a, a quick answer. Uh, well, you will count how many people say yes or no. You will count how many people will say often, sometimes, and never. And then from the computer you can generate um, graphs and um, columns to represent these numbers. We are going to have an example in the next lecture. So the key point from today's lecture, just to let you know that a very simple questionnaire we can have a lot of problem with. Problem uh, with this uh, demographic information or what is called non-linguistic information because this has nothing to do with language. I am asking about your name, about your age. So these are called non-linguistic information. Uh, and then we start the uh, language information or linguistic information. Still we have some problems. Uh, we have some leading questions, some double questions, sometimes some unanswered question. We don't have an answer to your question. So you need to pair all of these in your mind in using questionnaires. I hope uh, today's lecture wasn't complicated and very light. And thank you for watching and listening. All the best.